It is an island with great views, food, beaches, and horses, and Americans don't need a passport. We will take you there. Then we hit a Japanese restaurant with a French name in Las Vegas. Plus, we go back to the kitchen to bring you another undercover jet setter drink with a twist on a classic from the early 20th century. And we take you to another golf course in Las Vegas that requires some accurate shots. Cheers. Welcome. Welcome. We have found a beautiful island off the beaten path, but it's convenient for Americans. That's right. You don't need your passport. You can use your cell phone. Now, it's not Hawaii, which we always say is so convenient. In fact, it's off the coast of Puerto Rico, and we're going to take you now to Vieques. Jump into Vieques like my buddy Raleigh Rick Meadows did. After taking the leap and planning our trip, he quickly realized this was one of his favorites. The food's amazing, the island's amazing. I was talking to my wife Annie earlier, and this is not only our favorite New Year's trip, for we've been doing it for 10 years with everybody, it's my favorite island as well. Uh, we've traveled all over the Caribbean, and uh, this is our favorite island. It's beautiful. It's just a quick jump of a small plane ride, about 20 minutes from San Juan, Puerto Rico. More efficient, we are told, than by ferry. First thing you notice here is paradise, with views of the Atlantic and the Caribbean. Second, horses. Lots of them roaming free. About 3,000 horses on an island of only 10,000 people. Brought by the conquistadors, the horses are friendly and eager to be fed by locals and visitors. Third, the beaches. Considered some of the best in the world, there are so many that you feel like you have them all to yourself. As you saw that from your, when we took videos, that was great, isn't it? It's like you see people down there, but they're like this big. And um, that's the charm of our island. Our guide is Susan Osborne, full-time resident, artist, and property manager of this great home that eight of us stayed in for five days over New Year's. How nice? Well, my buddy Hank didn't want us letting the world know. You need to stay at the house we stay at. You need to meet Susan Osborne. Stop it. Stop it. I don't want him to do that. Oh, that's true. No, sorry. Susan's horrible. The house is terrible. <laughs> Couldn't get the air conditioning to go off. Honestly, rent a house. The house was great to have a starting point. Um, obviously, rent a Jeep. And there are plenty of Jeeps here. You will need it for the tight roads and rocky terrain, plus the absence of Uber and Lyft. Plus, a lot of the island is barely developed. One reason is that this was a U.S. Navy bombing range from World War II through Vietnam. Now, the bombing tests have stopped, but after many protests over health concerns, parts of the island are under U.S. Navy cleanup, the biggest industry on Vieques. And those cleaned-up lands are being returned to the natives, but you won't see lots of high-rise development here yet. As a result, Vieques is not for those who get bored easily. You need to be a self-starting adventurer. A rite of passage for people, here is the Sugar Pier, defunct for nearly 100 years after sugar prices fell in the early 20th century. But locals love to fall into the water here, as Raleigh Rick did twice. <laughs> it was awesome. It was very fun. Would you do it again? No. <laughs> <laughs> The pier is also a great snorkeling reef. Now, even though Vieques isn't recognized for snorkeling or diving, our traveling partner, Stuart, says it should be. Uh, the diving was pretty good. It's uh, not really known as a dive destination, but they have some beautiful reefs here. And uh, we saw some stingrays and barracuda and some other tropical fish. And is it worth, is it worth bringing the stuff? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, definitely worth doing some diving here. Vieques is known for its bio bay tours. The bay lights up with bioluminescence. Take a nighttime tour in a two-man clear bottom kayak. It is worth it. The video doesn't do Mother Nature justice, so we got these shots for you. The islanders here are very protective of the bay, so they discourage development. As a result, there are no golf courses on Vieques. If you want the links, you will have to take a ferry or a plane ride to other islands. Vieques is also known for its restaurants, thanks to locally grown produce and fresh fish. Here are a few spots you must hit. First, the El Canapo. 
our traveling partner Maggie, an actress, a foodie, and someone who speaks undercover jet setter lingo, found the cucumber collar. It has um, St. Germain in it, which is one of my favorite liqueurs. It's got cucumbers and mint and lemon, and it's refreshing and delicious, and I think it's a really creative presentation in the glass. And you, you said it was kind of like having a salad almost. Well, yes. I mean, you might as well call it a green juice. I feel like I'm cleansing practically by drinking it. The Portuguese-style sautéed calamari is a must with ceriço, olives, capers, tomato, white balsamic oregano, and spoonbread demon pesto. Not to be outdone, the mofongo with shrimp and lobster, a classic Puerto Rican dish with African origins that was begging for a return trip. Another great find was coqui fire with some homemade hot sauces that have a range of sweat factors even in the drinks. This margarita had a hot salt rub and some jalapeno infused tequila. It is a lively fun bite but it won't set your mouth on fire. And the ahi tuna here was superb. Get it. You also want to head to the tin box. Best sushi on the island. This is the ahi tuna. Light and delicious and this is the local lionfish which was superb as well. But also try the tin box watermelon margarita. We traveled with eight of us, but Vieques is also perfect for a couple's getaway or even a wedding or honeymoon when you just want to be alone. And you want to enjoy the people of Vieques. They are very friendly. We made what has become a customary stop at the living room, an outdoor area where some of the locals just sit and drink beer. That every time I go by, you beep and you wave and you yell hola or something. And um, sometimes I drive through and just drop them off some beers and people stop and visit them all the time. So we just started calling it the living room. And so these guys just hang out and just talk all day? Yeah. Well, and they change out. It's not the same guys all the time, uh -huh. um, but pretty much, yeah. And it, it's kind of endemic of the laid back way of life yes, here? Yes, yeah, that's for sure. One of the best spots to see the sunset is at Al's Mar Azul Bar. There you can meet local folks, and most of them will have suggestions for you on restaurants and places to see. It may surprise you to meet many Americans from the mainland who have moved here. We will explore living here in another story. Vieques is part of Puerto Rico, which is part of the U.S., so that means you can use the dollar, your cell phone, and most times, your English. Now, despite these comforts, you will feel like you are definitely getting away. Now, if you're visiting in the off-season, those months are September and October. Now, we're going to have a lot more in Vieques. All you have to do is go to our website, and we're going to have more on the many restaurants there. We're going to have more on that great house, and then also... You might want to live there. We'll show you how that can be done. Yeah, just visit us on our website, undercoverjetsetter.com, Facebook, and Twitter, and tweet us at UC Foodie TV. And when we come back, we're going to take you to a sushi place in Las Vegas. Cheers. Cheers. Now, Vegas has so many great restaurants, but as we always say, go off the beaten path. You don't necessarily have to be on the strip. And we went to Henderson and found great sushi. Vegas brings together all cuisines. We're in Henderson at Osaka. It's called Osaka Japanese Bistro. Wait, isn't a bistro French? Plus, our sushi chef extraordinaire is Julio Caesar. To add to the United Nations motif, we chose an American wine with German roots, the Rombauer Chardonnay from Carneros. One of our favorites, whether it's fish, meats, cheese, or just on its own, this is a big California Chardonnay that we've profiled before. And nothing here disappointed. First, we had the Japanese version of the amuse-bouche. The seaweed taste was fabulous with a little sweetness. Ever had this before? Yes, well, I've had a seaweed salad, but I've never had one with so many layers of other flavors like this was. And now we're ready to jump into the sushi. We got a plate of salmon, hamachi, which is yellowtail, and maguro, which is tuna. Mmm, fabulous. Then, Julio hit us with this albacore. Wow! And albacore is one of our favorites. You can't always find it. It's very special. It's cool and refreshing. Actually, it's, it's really great on a hot summer night. 
Next, we went to the roles masterfully created by Julio. All of these were fabulous. The fish comes fresh from the East Coast, but this might be the best sticky rice in the region, and any sushi expert will tell you it is all about the rice. Now the first roll was called Asakusa. It had a spicy tuna wrap in rice with albacore and tataki sauce on top. This it might have been the best of the night. The second one was Rapongi. Now this was also featured on Guy Fieri's show, Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives. It's shrimp, spicy tuna, and maguro topped with scallions and yum yum sauce. This is a great roll for anyone just getting into sushi. It has the safe shrimp with the bite of the spicy tuna and then the fatty tuna on the top. Third was Treasure Island. Now this was supposed to have salmon, but we think, and you notice this, because we raved about the albacore, Julio replaced it for us. Yes, that's right. Julio hooked us up with the albacore, and that's the kind of special treatment that you'll get when you come here. There were capers, sliced onion with hamachi, thin sliced lemon masago, scallions, and tataki sauce on the top. This was a fabulous combination with the citrus, meaning the coolness of the albacore, and the wasabi, and the amazing rice. If you need a good sushi fix in Henderson, go see Julio and his buddies. They know their stuff, and it is very fresh too. Osaka Japanese Bistro in Henderson. That was good sushi. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, no doubt about that. Now, go to our website, and we have a lot more restaurant choices, especially in Vegas. Now, when we come back, we go into the kitchen for a high-protein cocktail. And cheers, welcome back everybody. We've gone into the kitchen and to give you another undercover jet setter drink. And this one. Mm. Wow, we're actually tasting oh. it for the very first time. We've never had this before. This is called a Rosemary White Lady. And I would say, you don't have to be a lady to drink this. You can be a man to drink this. Oh yeah, and it's a manly drink, believe me. <laughs> that, that packs a bunch. And it's got a little bit of a kind of a Hemingway background, even though we've kind of recreated it from an old drink back from the, really the early 20th century or so, because it was in New York's, it was actually at Harry's New York in, in Paris. Yeah, exactly. Harry's New York Bar in Paris, which Hemingway frequented quite often. And in this version, we made it actually with Grand Marnier instead of Cointreau, and with gin instead of brandy, because it's kind of based on a sour recipe, which which is either a whiskey sour or a brandy sour, which is what it originally was. And it still has that sour taste in it. It really does, yeah, because it's got lemon in it. Yeah. And I love the lemon with the rosemary. It's actually really delicious. The rosemary is also a nice garnish on it, and you'll see it's really pretty. And here's what makes this drink so different. It's got egg whites in it. So it's actually kind of a nice protein drink whenever you need one as well. It's uh, one of those Bloody Mary snack within a snack. It's a protein shake in a cocktail kind of a thing. But as a result of having the egg whites in there, you got to do things a little differently because normally you're going to put the, uh, the ice in first, but we do it a little differently. So let's kind of go through the recipe for folks. Yeah, so what we want to do is we're going to put all of our ingredients in first. Then we're going to dry shake it. It's called dry shaking, even though all the ingredients are wet, pretty much. Um, and then when we're done with that, we're going to put the ice in. But first, what we did was we put all the ingredients in with no ice into a cocktail shaker. We did, for two drinks, four ounces of gin, and then one ounce of Grand Marnier. Then we put an ounce of lemon juice, we actually added a little bit more because we partialed the lemon juice. We had two egg whites that went in there, then a few dashes of agave, and then you want to save a few sprigs of rosemary for the garnish so it looks really pretty. Then you're going to shake it all up with no ice. Once you're done with that, take the lid off, add some ice cubes, as many or as little as you want. We like it nice and chilled, so we added a lot. Then shake it again, and then you're gonna pour it into your pretty martini glasses. Or that was a full uh, lemon. 
Um, and that's where we got more of the sour taste. I think that's better. I like it this way. I like it better too, yeah. The sour with the egg whites in there as, as a, is a nice combo. And of course, you're a big fan of gin. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, we, we've talked about gin a number of times. The Hendrix gin is something always, always, if you're gonna get gin, get Hendrix gin. It's always been in your family as well. Yeah, yeah, Hendrix gin. Uh, that's what I'm partial to. Um, I never really was a big gin fan until I tasted Hendrix gin. And I happened to taste it at the Sydney airport, walking through, if you've never been to the Sydney airport, you've got to go <laughs> and allow a few hours time just to spend at the airport because they have some really fun stuff there. And the duty free area is enormous. Uh, it's like you're in a shopping mall. So they happen to have tastings of Hendrix gin and they put slices of cucumber in it. Oh my gosh, this thing is amazing. It really brings out the herbaceous juniper flavor of a gin. When you get a chance, try the Rosemary White Lady. You can do it at home. We'll actually put the recipe on the uh, websites and our That's social right. media sites yeah. for you so you, you can take to, a look uh, at it. Go to undercoverjetsetter.com, the mixology tab for all the recipes. And don't forget to tweet us at UC Foodie TV with your cocktail recipes, your favorite food places and bars so we can feature them on the show. Cheers. Enjoy. Cheers. Well, welcome back. And now we are out of the kitchen and we are back to some wine. Everybody's gonna think we're a lush. I mean, we went from booze and then we're going back to wine. But well, of course, but not really. They're on the same page as us, right? Right. <laughs> now, we are gonna take you to a golf course in Las Vegas. And it's up on the west side of town, but if you play it, you might not even know you're in Las Vegas. And we're here with Jerry Montiel, the head pro out at Siena Golf Club. And uh, Jerry, first of all, thanks for having us out here today. Thanks for coming out. And uh, you know, one of, one of the interesting stories that I always tell folks is I, I brought a talent agent from LA out here to play a round of golf. We got on mm -hmm. the eighth hole and he just stood there and he goes, this is the most peaceful place I've ever been to to play golf. There was, there was no noise. We were, we were out further in the desert area there. That was the one thing I took away from. Again, I played out here an awful lot, so, so I'm used to the course. What's the one impression you get being the golf pro out here? You know, that's one thing I tend to do every once in a while is just stand back and take a look because the mountains in the background are just absolutely gorgeous. Um, it's just you forget where you are. And all of a sudden, you turn around and you have the Las Vegas Strip on the other side. So, I mean, it's just, it's gorgeous out here. It's definitely a great escape. How far away from the Strip are we? Nine miles. Nine miles, Nine miles straight so. west towards the, towards the mountains. Okay, and technically that could be anywhere from a 15 to 20 minute ride if you're yeah. on a Strip and have to get out of the exactly. traffic there. Okay, great escape here. Um, let's talk about the course and, and how it actually, actually plays. Um, I describe it as, it's not real long, it's fair, but you better pay attention. Yeah, absolutely. We have 97 bunkers, so I mean they're strategically placed. Guaranteed, you're going to be in a couple at least. Um, it's, it plays close to 7,000 yards, so the distance isn't extremely challenging. But again, those bunkers and there is some water that definitely comes into play. Okay, how about for the ladies? Ladies plays 5,500, uh, decent distance, a uh, few force carries, so it's it's tough for them too. I mean, it's 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 just a great golf course. Okay, so someone like myself who's a, a single-digit handicap, should you play from the tips? We have uh, five different tees actually, so mm -hmm. you could play from the black tees. We have gold, black, uh, blue, white, and green for the ladies. So I mean, it's. We've got a tee box for everybody. You know what I find too is when I come out here that uh, a, a number of times when uh, and, and again I'm about a six handicap. If I play the blues, it's it's a short course for me. If I play the blacks, it's a different course. If I play the golds, it's another different course. I, I know that's the same for a lot of courses uh, around the country, but is that something you'd suggest to a lot of folks? Um, absolutely. I mean, like I said, those bunkers are strategically placed. So depending on those tee boxes, you might have some super force carries and and get yourself in a lot of trouble. Now, we're at the summer of 09. Obviously, there's an economic downturn. Um, have you guys been doing anything different to try to get a lot of folks out here? Um, yeah, I mean, special promotions, of course, uh, trying to keep the golf course in great shape, which thankfully we usually are, um, and just trying to run specials and keeping everybody fresh. Okay. And you're fairly busy, too, the times yeah, that come out here. No absolutely. Okay. Uh, let's talk about the two signature holes that we're going to look at today. Let's talk about the fifth hole. It's a par three. Uh, it's, it's a little bit of a, I wouldn't call it an island hole. It's more of a peninsula hole. Right. Uh, it looks so easy, especially when you're playing it from the up tees. But I think when a lot of people get up there, the knees start knocking. What's your advice on that hole? <laughs> 
hit it straight. <laughs> um, I mean, the hole's 155 yards from the back tee. It's not extremely long, but you've got bunkers on, on uh, each side of the front part of the green, and of course, water surrounding on three quarters of it. So uh, it, accuracy is definitely a premium. So in other words, aim for the middle no matter where the pitch is. Aim for the middle. You'll have a 40-foot putt at most. Okay. Uh, let's talk about number 16 now. Number 16 mm -hmm. is a short par 4, slightly uphill, a ton of bunkers. Oh, it's really short. This is an easy hole, but I've seen so many of my friends that I bring out here walk away with double bogey. On this hole. <laughs> Including myself. <laughs> um, the defense there is actually the green. There's three distinct uh, tiers on that green. You, you could even drive the green if you're a long hitter and still walk away with par or bogey. Okay, what do you say to the, to the, average, the average handicapper? What, what, what's the advice to do on that hole? <laughs> Try to pop a three iron to the center of the fairway and uh, just hit a short iron in. Good 40 feet straight uphill, and um, you know, just try to aim for that correct tier. Okay. And hopefully, you can two putt. For people who have not played Vegas, whether they're playing out at Siena or not, give me your best tip. <sighs> Stay out of the traps. I mean, it's again 97 bunkers. Um, just try to hit it straight, and uh, just again sit back and relax, enjoy the views. No doubt about it. Okay, Jerry, give me the website. www.sienagolfclub.com. It'll show. Uh, all our different promotions and of course our player cards for our locals and uh, we always have the best deal for the best price. And great. Jerry, appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Now if you're looking for a great golf trip, all you have to do is go to our site. It's jetsetterdeals.com. It could be for golf or it could be just for a great vacation. Jetsetterdeals.com. And don't forget to tweet us at UC Foodie TV and check out our Facebook page too. And let us know what you'd like to see on the show coming up next or on future shows. See you soon. Cheers. Cheers.